shall treat figures of speech. What do you understand by the term figures of speech? Figures of speech are expressions that add beauty to our spoken and written communication. As a grammarian, you should cultivate the habit of using figures of speech in your spoken and written English. Do I seem to be communicating? Most especially when you are writing a letter, when you are writing an essay, make sure you polish your written English with the use of figures of speech. We are going to have a look at some figures of speech right now. The first one is simile. Simile is a figure of speech that shows comparison. That shows what? Comparison between two identical things with the use of like or has. With the use of what? Like or has. So simile is a figure of speech that shows comparison between two identical things with the use of what? Like or, or has. Example, he backs like a rabbit dog. He barks like a rabbit dog. Now listen, in this example, we use like to show comparison between what? E and what? The rabbit word dog. They have the same archery boots. Do I seem to be communicating? A shirt is has white as snow. A shirt is as white as snow. Here we use words has to show what comparison between what a shirt and what snow. The next one is personification. Say it, everybody. Personification. Personification. This is a figure of speech in which the attributes of a living thing is given to an inanimate object. What do I call it? What do I mean by inanimate object? Something that does not possess life. Yes. So, personification is a figure of speech whereby the quality, the attributes of a living thing is given to inanimate objects. Now, example, the sky is weeping. The sky is weeping. Now, in this example, you will discover that sky is being personified. Sky is given the attribute of what? Of, of living thing. The sky is weeping. The earl is a barber. A farmer can say, the O is our Baba. Am I communicating? So, O is being what? Personified. It's given the attribute of living thing. Do I seem to be communicating? The next one is oxymoron. This is a figure of speech in which two opposing words are placed side by side to create a sharp contrast. To, to create what? Oxymoron is the juxtaposition of two contradicting words. Example, what's the name? Dolapo. Dolapo is a sincere liar. Dolapo is a sincere liar. Now, if you look at this sentence, two words that are antagonizing each other are placed side by side, sincere, and what? So, Dolapo is a sincere liar. In this context, sincere means to be what? Upright. Liar means to be what? Dishonest. Am I communicating? So, these two words are placed side by side and they are contradicting each other. Do I seem to be communicating? Another example is, women are necessary evil for men. Women are necessary evil for men. Who can tell me the two words that are antagonizing each other there? Necessary. Necessary and evil. Shegun is a holy sinner. Holy sinner. Holy and what? Sinner. sinner. Do I seem to be communicating? Okay. The next one is irony. Irony. Irony is a figure of speech in which one says the opposite of what he or she intends 
to say? Am I communicating? When you mean the upper seats, am I communicating? However, we have different types of irony. We have verbal irony. We have dramatic irony. And we have irony of situation. Do I seem to be communicating? So, irony is a figure of speech in which one says the opposite of what he or she intends to say. Now, look at this example. The best way to avoid death is by jumping into fire. Hello? If you want to avoid death, do you need to jump, jump into the fire? No. Sir, of course, I mean the opposites. Bimbo is brilliant. She scores, she scores two over ten in the last test. Okay, Bimbo is brilliant. She scores two over ten in, in the test. Now listen. How can a brilliant student score two over ten? Of course, I'm, I'm talking ironically. I mean the upper seats. Am I communicating? Yes, sir. Invariably, I want to say Bimbo is what? Dull. It's not academically sound. Do I seem to be communicating? Yes. Okay. Now, the next one is pawn. Pawn. Pawn is a figure of speech that plays on words. It plays on words. Pawn is a figure of speech that plays on words. Okay. Now look at this sentence. The you can bank on our bank. Okay. Look at this example. You can bank on our bank. Now listen. Look at the word bank. The word bank in this example is being played upon. You can bank on our bank. In this context, bank means what? Rely or depend. On our bank. A yeah, bank means what? Financial institution. So the word bank is being played upon. It has different meanings. Am I communicating? So pawn is a figure of speech that's what? That plays on word. Do I seem to be communicating? Okay. The next one is synedoc. Synedoc. Synodoc is a figure of speech in which a part represents a whole or a whole represents a part. For example, if I say, I feed many mouths. I feed many mouths. Mouth is a part that represents the total numbers of people that I feed. So here a part represents a whole. Synodoc is a figure of speech in which a part represents a whole or a whole represents a part. I feed many mouths. We are not referring to mouths per se, but the people that I feed, members of my family. Okay. All highs were on me on my wedding day. All eyes were on me on my wedding day. All eyes were on me on my wedding day. Now listen, here a part represents a whole. We are not referring to eyes per se. We are referring to those people that were looking at me on my wedding day. So here a part represents a whole. Do I seem to be communicating? Yes, okay. Now look at this example. Nigeria defeated 
Ghana. Now, Nigeria defeated Ghana. I want to ask you a question. In this example, a whole represents a part. In the first example, a part represents a whole. In the second example, a part represents a whole. But in the third example, a whole represents a part. If I say Nigeria defeated Ghana, is it all the Nigerians that played the competition, the football match? Is it all the Nigerians? Who played the football match? 11 players that represent. So here, what happens? A whole represents a part. Do I seem to be communicating? Okay. Now, let's look at another one which is known as metaphor. Metaphor. Metaphor is an implicit comparison between two things without the use of like or has. Am I communicating? It is otherwise known as condensed simile. What do I call it? Condensed simile. Remember, simile compares with the use of what? Like or has. Metaphor is an implicit comparison between two things without the use of words like or has. Okay. Now, if I say the man is a green snake. I never said the man is like a green snake. The man is what? So, metaphor says the exact thing. It says what? The exact thing. It shows comparison without using like or has. Do you understand? Yeah. Metaphor. Can you give me another example of metaphor? Okay. Olur is a lion on the field. Olu is a lion on the field. Here is another example of what? Metaphor. Olu is a lion on the field. Do I seem to be communicating? Okay. So we've treated simile, metaphor, irony, oxymoron. The next one is apostrophe. 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 Apostrophe is a figure of speech in which we make a direct conversation or a direct address to something that is absent or incapable of hearing what we are saying. Apostrophe is a figure of speech in which we make what? A direct address or conversation with something that is incapable of hearing what we are saying. Let us assume that I go to Wyke office to check my results. On getting there, I discover the fact that English is F9. Biology, F9. Literature, F9. Economics, F9. And I said, ha, ah, Wahek, and you treat me like this. Can Wahek hear what I'm saying? No. I'm conversating. I'm making a direct address to something that is what? Absent, that does not have the capability of hearing. Am I communicating? If I say, death, be not proud. I'm, conversa I'm conversing with what? Death, which does not have the words ability to what I'm saying. Do I seem to be communicating? Yes. Now, okay. Now, the next one is paradox. Paradox. Say it, everybody. Paradox. 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 Now, paradox is a figure of speech in which the statement appears incredible. The statement appears absurd at first sight. When you see the statement for the first time, it doesn't make sense. But when you have a closer look at the statement, you discover that the statement is portraying the truth. So paradox is more of an absurd statement, an incredible statement. It sounds unreasonable, but a closer look at the statement shows that the statement is what? It's portraying the truth. Example, cowards die many times before their death. Cowards die many times before their death. Cowards die many times before their death. The next one, the child, the child is the father of the man. Of course, 
If you look at his statements at the initial stage, it appears unreasonable. It appears incredible. How can the child be the father of the man? But a closer look at his statement portrays truth. There is element of truth. Okay, the child is the father of the man. When the man must have been hold, who is going to take care of the, of the man? So the child is the father of the man. Do I seem to be communicating? Cowards die many times before their death. Okay, when you look at this expression, at the initial stage, it appears unreasonable. It appears unbelievable, incredible. But a closer look portrays the fact that the, st the sentence is what is conveying the truth. Do I seem to be communicating? Yes, the next one is euphemism. Euphemism. Euphemism is a figure of speech in which unpleasant situation is presented in a pleasant way. It's a figure of speech in which what? Unpleasant situation is presented in a pleasant way. For example, if I say, what's the name? Ayo. Ayo is a light-fingered fellow. That means Ayo is what? A thief. So instead of saying Ayo is a thief, what do I use? I use what? A less offensive expression. Ayo is a light-fingered fellow. My father is unsighted. Now, which means my father is what? Blind. Instead of saying, my father is blind, what do I use? I use a less offensive expression to, to, what? to depict the fact that my father is what? Blind. blind. Do I seem to be communicating? Yes, sir. Or if I say, she is mentally challenged. That, that means she's what? Insane. Insane. Okay. So this is what? Euphemism. That means she's not normal. That means the person has run amok. Am I communicating? Yeah. Okay. So now let's look at that. Now, can you give me other examples of figures of speech? We have our alliteration. Okay. What is alliteration? Alliteration is the initial repetition of consonant sign. Is the word? Initial repetition of consonant sign. Most especially in lines of poetry. Now if I say, funke, fried, fresh, fish, for, fumi. What's the alliterate here? There is initial, there is repetition of initial consonant sound in this line, in this sentence. Funke, fried, fresh, fish. For send Sule to Suleri to sell fish. What's the alliterate here? Do you understand? Yes, sir. Okay. So, how many? Okay. Okay. Now, the next one is climbers. Climbers. Who can tell me the opposite of climbers? Anti God bless you. Climbers. What is climbers? Climbers is the arrangement of events. In what? In what? In ascending order. Okay. Example. I came. I saw. And I conquered. How many events do we have here? Okay. So, climax is the arrangement of events in what? Ascending order. Now, the next one is hyperbole. Hyperbole is otherwise known as overstatement. What do I call it? Overstatement. A, a deliberate exaggeration. Hyperbole is a figure of speech that makes something smaller sound bigger. For example, if I say, I will die for your love. Of course, I'm exaggerating. Or if I say, Shola is 
taller than a palm tree. This is an exaggeration. The height of Shola has been blown out of proportion. Am I communicating? Although Shola is bright, yet <laughs> she can never be as tall as what? Am I communicating? So the height of Shola has been blown out of what? Proportion. So exaggeration is a figure of speech which makes something smaller, signs bigger. It is a deliberate exaggeration. Am I communicating? Hyperbole is what? A deliberate exaggeration. Have a nice day, class.